Hey everyone, so in this segment we're going to be talking about five things that you need to know about Harvard Extension School. So for those of you who are new to this, or perhaps if you've done some research and you still have some questions that you have, perhaps this will answer some of the most basic questions, or perhaps questions that you've seen in various forums or websites online. So we're going to go into it right now, and the first thing that we want to talk about is the fact that graduating from Harvard Extension School does make the graduate a graduate of Harvard University. And what we mean by this is, is the fact that if you think about Harvard University as an umbrella, there's a bunch of degree granting colleges within Harvard University. So an example is the Extension School, in addition to Harvard College, the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, um, the, the Harvard Business School, the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, you, you kind of get the idea there. Now, anybody who graduates with a degree from any one of these degree granting schools is going to be a graduate of Harvard University. So they're a member of the Harvard University Alumni Association, in addition to being a graduate of the particular degree granting college that they happen to come from. So the reason why this is actually significant is because this brings me to the second point, which is the fact that although there's a lot of overlap in the subject area that you can study at the extension school, in addition to some of the other degree granting schools within Harvard University, they're actually very different. And I'm going to give you an example here. So let's say somebody comes from the Harvard Extension School and they have a degree in history or religious studies or government. That's going to be very different graduating from the extension school with those particular majors as compared to going to Harvard College. Now, the biggest difference in getting into the programs is the fact that admissions to Harvard College is going to be uh, very traditional in the sense that you're going to look at SAT scores, high school transcripts, you're going to look at extracurricular activities, letters of recommendation, some of the more traditional aspects of admissions, whereas the extension school is going to take a little bit more of a holistic aspect, particularly because they tend to attract people who are non-traditional applicants, and they might look at the performance on three courses that are going to be taken before somebody actually seeks admissions as well. And so the admission standards are going to be very, very different between the two programs as well. Also, the delivery method of the two programs are going to be very different. And this is going to lead into the third program, into the third point, which I will touch on in a second. But the extension school does offer a lot of opportunities for students to take courses through distance education, whereas Harvard College is going to be a program that's going to require students to be on campus for the entire duration of their actual program. So if you want to know more differences between the other programs offered at Harvard, you'd have to go to the individual sites that correspond to the particular degree granting college that you're interested in. Look at their admissions standards and actually compare it to what you would see from the extension school. Also, keep in mind the fact that not all subject areas and majors offered through other degree granting schools is going to be offered through the extension school. There is a select few offered through the extension school, so that is something for you to keep in mind as well. But again, they're going to be completely different programs, uh, also because of the fact that the extension school doesn't only take from Harvard faculty, but they might also take from industry leaders to be teaching some of the, the programs in addition to some faculty who might have full-time positions at other neighboring uh, institutions around the Cambridge area as well. So going into the third point, although there is a lot of opportunities for distance education through the extension school, students can often take many of the courses uh, that correspond to the degree through distance education, there is an on-campus component. So if this is something that you can't fulfill at any point throughout the actual degree, then perhaps this isn't something for you. Um, there isn't currently a degree or major uh, within the extension school that's going to allow people to complete it uh, exclusively through distance education. There are some programs that have fewer residency uh, components than some others, but there is going to be at least one to two, uh, in some cases, residency components, either at the bachelor's or master's level as well. Some cases, perhaps even more. So you definitely want to look uh, at your corresponding program that you're interested in and actually get in touch with the school to see if this is something that interests interests you or something that you'll be able to fulfill. Going into the next point is the fact that the programs themselves are actually not easy. And so a lot of people assume that, oh, you're going through the continuing education uh, division. The admission standards are going to be non-traditional, so it might be a little bit different than what you would expect um, through some other institutions as well. But the fact is that this isn't a way for somebody to phone in a degree from an Ivy League institution. Although it's offered through the distance education division of Harvard University and is slightly different than some of the programs offered through the other uh, 
uh, degree granting colleges within Harvard University. These are by no means easy degrees uh, to complete. In fact, what we find is a lot of students might find that there's a non-traditional route into getting into the, the degree program, but actually being able to complete the degree program and complete it effectively is going to take quite a substantial amount of time and commitment in order to be successful in these particular programs. And so this is something for students to actually keep in mind uh, to ensure that they have a full understanding of what rigor is actually involved in some of these programs and what dedication they're going to need in order for them to be successful uh, at this level. The next thing I want to go uh, I want to talk about briefly is, is something that is actually tied to this loosely in the fact that uh, admissions isn't guaranteed. A lot of people have a convoluted idea about the fact that because there's a non-traditional route to admissions, it's a, it's a little bit easier to actually get into the programs uh, based on the fact that they do uh, tend to look at performance on three courses that are taken before someone's formally admitted into the program, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee admissions. That just means that somebody has fulfilled one of the requirements for them to potentially be considered for admission. So that's something for you to also consider as well. Going into the next point, um, a key distinction between the extension school and any of the other degree granting schools within Harvard University is the fact that all bachelor's degrees and master's degrees from the extension school are going to have either a Bachelor of Liberal Arts or a Master of Liberal Arts um, as the degree title. Now, this is a key distinction to know whether or not somebody actually graduated from the Extension School or not. For example, somebody who graduates with a history degree from Harvard College is going to have a Bachelor of Arts in history, whereas somebody from the Extension School who graduates with a bachelor's degree in history is going to have a Bachelor of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies with a concentration in history. So there's a big difference there. And there's a key distinction. Now, both of them, of course, um, graduate from their respective degree granting college within Harvard University. So they're both part of Harvard Alumni Association. Um, they, they both have a world class education. The Harvard College student would have had a very different admissions path and would have a very different degree path to that uh, to that degree as well. But that is something for you to actually consider as well, regardless of the field of study, by the way, because there are some uh, majors within the extension school that aren't traditionally liberal arts majors. A great example is biotechnology, finance, and management typically don't fall within the liberal arts, but every degree that's offered through the extension school is going to have an either a bachelor of liberal arts in extension studies or a master of liberal arts in extension studies. So that is something for you to keep in mind as well. So Hopefully this added a little bit more clarification for you if you're doing some research, if you're interested in these particular programs. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments, questions, and concerns. If you have pursued any of these programs or uh, if you know anyone who has, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts, your concerns, or any other questions that you might have. Perhaps we can address it in a future segment as well. As always, thank you so much again for listening into the segment. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. As always, thanks for listening in, and we'll see you in the next one.